German masala, sit back and listen to German masala, sit back and listen to German. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the German masala podcast. I'm your host, Alex. And I'm your other host, Harbir. And welcome to this episode, which again is publishing a bit late. So we'll start this episode off with a scheduling note. We did say last time where we were also a little late because of some, you know, sickness and stuff um, that we would publish in two weeks. But I think we're currently on a three week schedule, which is working out rather good for us. So we'll keep it on a three week schedule. So please expect the next episode to be not in two, but in three weeks. If you have any feedback for us, if you say like, no, we can't live without your podcast episode for another two weeks, please do let us know. Shoot us an email. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment. But without further ado, before we jump into this week's topic, which if you didn't know, I will bring to Harbir and me because our podcast is made, you know, from the idea that we will talk about stuff. Uh, Harbir is from India. I'm from Germany. But you, Harbir, how long have you lived in Germany now, Harbir? For how well, long? Since 2006. So it's right, been so, a long time. <laughs> so you're you're like almost, almost, you, you can, you know, talk about stuff that's happening in Germany probably yeah. as well as I can. <laughs> Definitely. I think I'm also... Uh, I mean, on paper, I'm a German anyways, but I have also become, uh, in reality, I've become a lot more German than I was like 10 years ago, you know. <laughs> well, hopefully you'll remember some of that stuff. But again, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we, we take turns and bring each other topics. And the twist here is that the other person never knows what we'll be talking about. So today it's my turn. Last time, Harbir brought us a topic and we talked about the upcoming election, which at that point was upcoming. Now it's not upcoming anymore. Let's touch upon that really quick before we jump into my topic. Harbir, your gut feeling was that Trump was going to win. And yeah. luckily, you were wrong. <laughs> I'm so happy that I was wrong, <laughs> that I am wrong. Um, yeah, really happy about the outcome right now. At least I am, and I know you are. I know there are people in the US who are not so happy with the outcome, <laughs> and especially in the White House right now. Um, don't know what's going to happen. Things are looking quite strange and quite, uh, you know, unexpected over there, right? Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. It is looking uh, rather interesting, let's put it that way. But at least, you know, the, the democratic process took its turn and worked out, right? And that's, I think, the most important thing that there is still a process to all of this. And, um, you know, you shouldn't disregard this as something that's purely negative or purely positive. But it shows that, you know, at least this time, the people who voted for the candidate, like the, the people who casted the most votes for the candidate actually had that candidate won, win the election, which is just great to see. And, and it just gives me hope that, you know, no matter how bad it sometimes gets, there is still a process that is being upheld. Um, yeah, let's see how it turns out. <laughs> yeah. And another great thing is that it was the highest ever voter turnover in the US. That's what they are saying. So Donald Trump actually motivated people to go out there and vote. So there's something positive that came out of this whole situation. Right. I just hope that this is a lasting effect, right? I just hope that people now see that, you know, in some states, the, the votes were like in the thousands, like, like maybe 10,000 or so votes apart, but that's not a lot. That's like yeah. my, you know, little quarter here of Hamburg probably. And all of these people like, so your vote actually counted this time. And I hope that people will remember this and be like, you know what? Remember like the 2020 election, like my vote counted. I will go and vote now every single time there's something to vote for because that's democracy, right? Definitely. All right, Boom. great. Great, great. Okay, so we're jumping into our new topic for this week. Again, I'm bringing this to you. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, the quality may be a little less of what you had to, well, feast your eyes on in the past. Um, but uh, we, will, we will get back on track. We are currently working on some equipment stuff. So uh, look forward to seeing us in a little more HD quality at some point. Maybe you don't even want this. So maybe this is good enough for you. But yeah. um, 
We, we we need a tech guy, Alex, as you know, Joe Rogan has or all the big podcasters have. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm usually the tech guy, so I yeah. should be able to take on this role. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree. And I mean, you know your way around the tech stuff a lot. I do a little bit as well. Uh, so it's not a problem. It's just me being a little bit lazy in the last few weeks. <laughs> That I haven't really got a proper setup yet, but uh, should be should be the case soon. Oh, it's fine. I mean, like remote recording is always uh, a challenge. Let's put it this way. Um, but yeah. we'll see how it turns out. Anyway, um, topic for this week, Harbir. I hope you remember some things of your home country, because I felt like we've been talking a lot. I actually got that feedback as well. We've been talking a lot about the U.S. and stuff like that. I think it was interesting. Our last episode got a lot of views. Uh, so we we do see that current topics are important. And maybe, hey, maybe we'll put this on more of the current topics. But for today, let's go back to our roots. It's called German Masala for a reason. We have Indian and the German. So that's that's good, right? That's good. Yeah. We'll be talking about something that I always find fascinating etiquette or as you call it in uh, german knigge right okay. so the the unwritten or sometimes i guess written rules of well you know basically human interactions in a country stuff that you might perceive stuff that you might see stuff that you may not know and i feel like a lot of things are similar in the Western world. Like we've been talking a lot about America and there are subtle differences. For example, uh, I was just on the phone with an American company because I was booking something and uh, and I immediately switched over in my American mode and I asked them like, hey, how are you doing? And stuff like this, where you know this is not something you would typically do in Germany. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like there are differences in the Western world versus India and I hope you can enlighten me a little bit and we can talk about this for the next you know I don't know half hour hour or so let's see how it goes whoa <laughs> that's a, <laughs> an interesting and a lengthy topic I guess it's always it always depends on what exactly you're talking about so I mean we need to give this a structure somehow right so yes we'll we'll narrow it down we'll narrow it down a little <laughs> bit so that we don't get don't get caught up in the weeds too much yeah you're right yeah, but I mean, I do remember everything I would say from my country. <laughs> you don't forget right. your upbringing, although I was born uh, in Tanzania, which is uh, I mean, in East Africa. True. But you grew was, up in India. I grew up in India. I was six when we moved to India. And I mean, my family was always Indian. So, you know, uh, even though I was born in Africa and Tanzania, my first five years was were also you know uh, consisted of indian upbringing right so yeah i think i can talk about that awesome awesome all right let me start with a first question which is probably the hopefully the easiest one to answer but if i were because i was never in india before if i were to travel to india what are the like top three things you would tell me to watch out for so that i'm not you know stepping into the next what do you call it like fresnap or like stepping into the next like uh just you know kind of embarrassing myself <laughs> well usually people talk about when they talk about what do you have to uh, you know be careful about when you go to india they say oh don't drink water outside just drink bottled water don't eat uh the food uh in the street uh, corners or something, you know, but I, I wouldn't go into that because that's not the topic, right? So the topic is more about the cultural things. What yes. should you, you know, avoid? So you said three things. Um, the first thing I would say is, uh, I think we talked about this a lot uh, in, in one of the uh, other episodes, uh, like early episodes, when we were talking about upbringing in India. And it's basically you don't um, sort of call people by their name when they're elder than you, right? Oh. So, yeah. So if I talk to your father and I know him, I met him, I call him Paul because his name is Paul, right? Yes. In India, you wouldn't call my father by his name. You would call him uncle. Everyone is uncle or auntie. So, so even if I'm even if I'm a guest there, if I like, I've never met anyone. If I'm coming and traveling <laughs> from like Germany the first time ever, I would call people that. Well, they wouldn't mind in that case, really, because you're a foreigner. You don't 
know about the culture a lot, you know, <laughs> but as you're my friend, you know, they would expect you to, and of course, because they are elder than you. So no one calls people elder than them by their names, right? So usually even people who would come to sell your stuff to your house, right? They don't know you. They would go, hello, uncle, hello, auntie. Or, of course not hello. They would go, namaste or sasrikal or whatever, whatever the greeting in that region is, right? And they would say, auntie, uncle, and that's how they would talk. <laughs> that is so, okay, so let me ask you this. Is this even something in the business world? Like if you're, let's say you're working for a big company, you know, you're, I don't know, a consultant, you can relate to that. I can relate to that. So, yeah. you're, you're, you know, you're going to another con like company in, in India uh, and you're consulting there. And obviously we're still quite young, I would say, right? So like, you're talking to someone who's older than you. What are you, like, what, how do you address them? So, uh, madam. That's Sir and madam? Good. Yeah, exactly. So okay. especially in, if they are in position that is uh, like from hierarchy level, a little bit higher than yours. That is interesting. All right. But the, <laughs> but the auntie and uncle stuff is actually even like, I mean, you said door to door sales, people would say that. So it's, it's definitely something you, you do, right? Yeah, well, the corporate world is different than your personal world, right? So sure. uh, when they are door to door sales uh, people, they are they actually have contact with yeah i mean that's retail sort of thing you have direct customer contact right sure. but when you are in an office environment it's it's a bit different it becomes more professional so you leave the uncles and aunties i think out you are still in some cases you would go like bhaiya which is the word for brother or didi and uh, which is the word for sister i've heard that happening as well but mostly it's sirs and madams yeah yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think this would ever happen in Germany. In Germany, it's still pretty formal. Um, it is loosening up, I would say, a little bit. I don't know how you perceived it, but I would say uh, not even only in the business world, but also in the private world. Um, I don't, at this point, actually, I don't expect people to call me the formal you anymore. Um, mm -hmm. In Germany, we have a formal you. It's not just, you know, you as in you as a friend and you as a you know, person of respect, it's uh, do and z, and mm -hmm. uh, the z form is the formal form, which is still pretty prevalent in the business world, I would say. Um, but, you know, it's uh, losing it a little bit. And a lot of people, like I sign my email just with Alex, like no matter who I, well, actually that's not true. Like if I talk to like a bank representative or something, I try to keep a formal tone there, but especially for, you know, like, day-to-day -day business communications i'm usually just signing my first name yeah yeah uh, understandable that's how i do it as well i still remember my first ever office job well it was an internship in germany and i it was a very formal company it was in logistics and they tend to be a bit more conservative than let's say tech and i called my boss uh, like with z which is a formal way of addressing someone and he did the same with me. So that was also a sort of strange thing for me because in India, you would say uncle and auntie to people who are older than you or sirs or madam, but they would call you by your name. So you you can't expect them to give you the same respect as well. <laughs> that is so Wait, so what if you don't know how old someone is? Do you ask for their age? Nah, no. Nah. So this is another thing you don't, <laughs> this is another thing you don't do. I mean, people can be quite blunt sometimes and would ask you, and no one really takes that seriously as well. I mean, in, I, I know in Germany, like age is, uh, you can you can ask people for their age, right? Even in news articles, when there's something written, if someone has been, and the example I was about to give us, if someone is shot, not the best example, but usually yeah. his yeah. or her age is written behind it. Oh, 55 years old. And then, you know, in India, that's not the most important thing, mm -hmm. age. But people kind of, you know, I mean, you can ask them. It's not something people really want to talk about. But if you ask them, they won't be offended. Yeah, I guess I guess it's fine. It's just it just doesn't happen that much in India. Yeah, I would say in Germany, if you would ask someone for the age, it, I don't. I think some people would get offended. Um, some people may not. I mean, it's 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 such a weird thing. Like sometimes you know people care, sometimes people don't care. Uh, again, I think it's loosening up a little bit. Back in the days, 
before I was born, before you were born. I think it's it, it was more of a formality to not discuss certain topics. And I think a lot of things are changing as the world is changing, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I, I've never been asked unless, you know, you wanted to buy alcohol when you were younger or something like this. I've never really been asked for my age directly um, apart from, you know, some business settings or sometimes when you get to know people better, you're talking over dinner or something. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So that was the first one, right? So you're, you're how you address people. So I will remember if I ever, you know, go to India and it's, it's more of a casual trip. Uh, I should address people with auntie and uncle rather than, <laughs> uh, rather than anything else, but I should expect them to call me by my, you know, first name or something. Right. Exactly. If they're elder right. than you, if they're younger than you, they would probably go like Paya, which is like big word for brick brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> all right that sounds yeah. good all right what's what's the second thing that uh you know people should keep in mind or expect or should not do um <laughs> uh, from my experiences i mean india is a very religious country a lot of the stuff that is happening over there revolves around religion so if you are going somewhere on the weekend on Sundays. So Saturdays are usually not off. Sundays are off like one Mm -hmm. day a week and people go out. And basically a lot of the times going out means to go to a temple somewhere further away from your house so that it's kind of an outing for you, kind of a picnic for you, but you also combine it with religion, right? So as a tourist, a lot of the time what you are doing is going to these temples, these mosques, uh, you know, visiting these religious places. And over there, there are certain things you need to um, think about, you need to take care of. For example, if you're going into a Sikh temple, you have to wear a head covering. Uh, if you are going into any temple or mosque, you have to lose your shoes before going in. You have to wash your feet before going in. Those kind of things. Because Religion, again, is a very important thing for most Indians, I would say. Uh, If you are somehow kind of not respectful about their religion, that might offend them in a serious manner. Interesting. Yeah, Yeah. I was uh, in, you know, the Dubai and United Arab Emirates a time ago. And it's also the same there when you're visiting, you know, certain places, you're expected to follow local, you know, whatever you want to call like guidelines. So um, there are differences also between men and women. Is it the same in India? Like, because I remember there, I think it was um, men had to you know, cover the, well, men had to basically look decent enough to, you know, enter a temple. And yes, you, I think you had to take off your shoes or something, Uh, but women had to also cover their knees, I wanted to say, and and their heads or something. Uh, Is is there a differentiation being made there as well? Uh, It depends on the religion, right? So in, uh, for example, I belong to a Sikh family, a Sikh family, uh, Mm -hmm. which is, that's a minority religion. Uh, I think uh, less than 2% of the people in India are Sikhs. Uh, Which is still a lot though, because India just is huge and has a big population, so. Exactly, I think think it might be like the fifth or the sixth largest religion in the world. But still minority in India, you know, considering that uh, over 80 or I think 84 percent of the whole population are Hindus. And then there's like 14 percent, which is uh, uh, which belong to Islam uh, as religion. And then the other two percent are all the others like they will be Sikhs, they will be Christians, Buddhists and all the other religions over there. That is definitely minority religion interesting Uh, (laughs) anyway please carry on (laughs) yeah and um so in sikhism it doesn't matter if you're a woman if you're a man so the rules are same Uh, you have to if you're going into a temple you have to be decent um you don't have to cover your whole body all the time but you have to wear decent clothing right Mm -hmm. uh i think it's the same with hinduism as well i don't know if there are uh, certain rules in other religions which sort of are different for men, women and men. Might be, I'm not an expert over there. <laughs> That's completely fine, but that is a good point to keep in mind. And I would say it's basically the same 
here in Germany, like not in the sense of that you have to wear certain coverings. I think if you're visiting churches, no matter if it's Catholic church or Protestant church, I think it's most, you're most likely to be fine wearing pretty much whatever you want. Uh, but there are certain things which are not seen su super like, well, I mean, certainly photography with flash is something. I think it's more of, you know, keeping the peace. And if people actually do want to pray in there while visiting hours are open, that they're not completely, you know, startled by people using their flash, stuff like that. So there are definitely some some rules. But I would say hearing what you just told me, it's definitely more strict, like the the stuff that you're supposed to follow or that you're expected to follow is a little bit more than what you could expect in other parts of the world. Yeah, I agree. I, I think uh, main thing is you just follow what the locals are doing. Maybe just ask anyone, you know, when you're going to a temple. Ask. People are more than happy to help. People are really, really happy to talk to foreigners whenever they see them. They would even take pictures with you. You would be treated as a, as a celebrity, <laughs> as a royalty. Over there. Wow. Now, if that doesn't want to make you go to India, I don't know what. <laughs> so the thing is, nowadays, it has become a lot more common that you see foreigners over there, right, in, in the smaller cities in India. Uh, like if you go 20 years back, they were almost, I mean, foreigners did used to go to India, but mostly like to the touristic cities like, you know, Mumbai, Delhi, or they would go to Jaipur, which is like a desert with beautiful castles and stuff, you know. But in the smaller cities like where I'm from, you would sell them, you would hardly see a foreigner ever. And so whenever there was someone, people were really, oh, wow, this is someone who looks different than us. And they would go up to uh, them and get pictures with them. And especially if you were white, <laughs> I mean, uh, things can become, I don't know if I should talk about this, but <laughs> <laughs> this, this happens a lot. So Indians, um, well, the people I know are attracted a lot more towards towards wh whiter skin complexion than than a little bit darker one, which is, yeah. I think, I, I guess the thing is you always want what you don't have, right? So, for example, people in Europe really want to do sunbathing and want to become more brown, sort of tan. And in India, because everyone is tan anyways, they sort of go for, you know, uh, more whiter skin complexion. There was, or I think there's still this cream called Fair and Lovely in India. So you can buy that cream to the whole marketing campaign is okay. It'll make you make your skin uh, color more white, more. Wow. Fair. <laughs> that, is, that is so. Yeah, I would say complete opposite here because here people, it's it's taken as. I would say even like a sign of wealth is if your face is, you know, like brownish because you are out in the sun, you could afford to take a vacation at the Baltic Sea or, you know, even if you go skiing or I don't know, like travel to the Mediterranean somewhere where there's, you know, sun and you can lay on the beach for a week or something like this. It's, I would say there's a certain, you know, consideration. However, there's also maybe one if you're working as a, you know, just construction worker or someone who's always outside and is super tan. Like, I think there's a little, you know, like, this is it's not, it's not always seen as super wealthy yeah. or something. <laughs> but this is, this is very interesting. I think this whole, these, these things start with, you know, like, this is a sign of prosperity. You were saying you can take vacations and that's how you got around. That's a sign of prosperity, right? Yes, it is. And, yeah. and in, country like India, I'm guessing I'm, I mean, I am not a historian or I'm not a psychologist over here, but, you know, I, I think because a lot of the work that was done in India was uh, like people working with their hands, people doing really physical work, either in agriculture or in, you know, whatever industries there. And there's always sun in India, like in a lot of the region of uh, regions in India, right? So it's it's hot. It can be very hot. And you would obviously become brown. And if you were sort of, you did not have that brown, that tan skin complexion, that would be, oh, you don't have to work with your hands. You are not outside. And you can stay inside. Hard, and that's, know, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. Also, very interesting thing in, um, India, like, 
uh, when you are a little bit heavier, like you have a full face, full round face, and you know you have a little bit of stomach, it's considered as a sign of prosperity still by a lot of older generation. Oh. I think younger generation knows that it's not really healthy, and they are working on that to you know become more fit to eat like keto diets and all those things are also thing in India with the younger generation, but with the older generation, it's not really the case. My mom would see me if I lose some weight. You know, I try to lose some weight because I think I'm overweight right now. <laughs> and when she would see me and, you know, oh, why have you become so thin? And I'm never thin. <laughs> I mean, I've always been average. But if I lose like three, four kgs, she would see, oh, why, why are you so thin now? You know, really, that's interesting. Yeah. But I guess so. You would actually, so it would be considered wealthy if you have something you actually see. Like it would be a little bit more than just you know a couple of. It would be something where you're like, okay, that person is not perfectly in shape. In yeah. like the countries here, you would say that probably. <laughs> yeah, over there it's in shape. It's healthy. The word is uh, yeah, takara, which is like healthy. Yeah. Wow. That person. They wouldn't call you fat. They wouldn't they would call you oh he's, Help. he's oh look he's he's super healthy. Look at that. Wow. Interesting. And I usually say that's not healthy, mom. That's 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 fat. But anyways. Yeah. Well, to be completely fair though, if if I remember my German history lessons correctly, there definitely was a time where it's the, it was the same here. So if you were a king or you know, someone uh who had more of a wealth build up then it would be con like back in the middle ages definitely like there was a time when you're if you were a little fatter basically you would be considered like rich because you could afford to eat stuff and you know maybe not work so much that you would lose it all by the end of your day and i think there was also the time where your skin was supposed to be super white and you would powder yourself to uh to look more white to to appeal to the upper society stuff like that so yeah. um i think there are times of you know change everywhere so it's interesting yeah. to see that it's very interesting so cultures evolve in a similar manner right it just yeah. that some cultures are like 100 years ahead and the others are a little bit behind but you know the, everyone is getting there everyone is getting to the same place somehow yeah i don't know if it's the exact same place i think there are cycles also attached to that i think there are cycles of you know people liking a certain style and then disliking it and then liking it again and i think sometimes the cycles sync up and sometimes they just don't sync up sometimes it's just you know you're like the one country is here at the cycle like hey we like i don't know darker skin and then the other one is here right like lighter skin and then w when it has changed it just doesn't sync up then it's completely reversed but yeah still interesting all right that that was cool. uh oh sorry yeah uh, that was two two things um <laughs> that, that we talked about one thing that i wanted to touch on here is before we get into your third tip for people visiting India, um, would you say people, I think we talked about this in the past sometime, but would you say, because you're talking about respecting religion, you know, and, and people are super helpful, would you say they're more helpful than people in other countries, especially, you know, comparing it here to Germany? Or helpful. more respectful, actually, also, yeah. Respectful towards you as a foreigner, or what you want exactly? Well, respectful to you as a person. So, because you know, you said it's expected that you follow guidelines when it comes to visiting temples, when it comes to visiting, you know, family stuff like that. That that people will help you like gladly, but you're expected to respect them. And I would think, at least, that's my hypothesis here. That's what I wanna wanna ask you is like that people would, if you're, whatever. Catholic, Protestant, like some religions they maybe have never heard, of, or you're an atheist or something, um, that people would still like are, be respectful to you, help you, like they wouldn't, they would completely look past that and would just try to be as respectful as they could. Whereas, you know, here this, I don't know, is, is, is different? Like, do you think people are more open in India versus here in Germany? I, I think they are, the definition of respect is different over okay. here than, than in India. I, I don't think that um, uh, people are or people over here are less respectful or people over in India are more respectful. It's just about what you consider to be respect. I, I can still remember one incident uh, um, that happened to me when I first started university over here. I was talking to one of my 
good friends back then, uh, a German guy, obviously. And uh, we were talking. And then suddenly, somehow we talked about how an Indian wouldn't lie on a bed with their feet pointing towards their parents or touching their parents. And this was a very strange concept for my for my German friend, which was, I mean, he said, okay, he's, those are your parents. Those are, they are not God or anything that you have to follow certain <laughs> rules, right? Yeah. You can be just normal with them. So I think the definition of respect is, is a bit different, right? So it's always it always depends on the culture again what you yourself see as respect. That's true. That's true. But maybe you know, given that these definitions are a little bit different, I would probably perceive people in India more respectful just because they are, you know, their definition of respect differs a little bit from my definition of respect, and it maybe just gives me the impression that it's a higher form of respect to to say the least you know like that mm -hmm. if i would be i don't know if i would say something rude or something that i wouldn't consider rude, maybe those people would still be super nice and they would see i'm a foreigner i mean it's easier to see me there as a foreigner i guess than people coming here but still and and people would be like hey it probably doesn't mean it or would try to help me and i don't know i think that's 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 nice yeah it's great all right so great. so third third tip third tip for people visiting what do you what would you say that's a, a very funny one. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I, I think you're going to like it. So when you go to uh, someone's home in India, or even over here to an Indian's home, right? If they offer you something to eat, so you are supposed to say, like, no, at least one or two or three times. Oh no no no! I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm I'm not hungry at all. And but they will just keep insisting. Have some. Have some. And on the fourth or the fifth try, you will take some. This I, is... <laughs> I completely messed it up when I visited you. No, no, you, you don't have before. to do it. No, Alex, you don't have to do it with me. I was like, oh yeah, great. That's food. I love it. <laughs> no, you you don't have to do it with me well, because okay. you know we are friends. We know each other, and we are you know I'm quite you know, quite Germanized now. Yeah, so uh, for true. me, it's fine. I know the culture. I know the culture I'm living in. It's different over here. But in India, this usually happens. So my parents, when they come here to visit and they would go to, uh, my sister lives over here as well. She would take uh, them to her friends. We will take them to our friends, German friends, right? They would go there and people would offer them something to eat or drink. And they would go, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 we are fine. <laughs> and people wouldn't offer again, which is like normal <laughs> thing because, you know, you said you're fine. You don't need anything. That's why you're not getting offered again. Exactly. Right? <laughs> that's the logical response to that. <laughs> that's the logical. And that's this is something very funny. It's a, it's a cultural difference again. So it, even if, if you're completely hungry, your parents would still say, like, no, one or, no, or no, we are fine. Yeah, they will definitely say that. <laughs> Are you expected to ask exactly after, like right after that? So let's say I'm, you know, I'm offering you food. You say, no, no, I'm good. Would I say like, are you sure? Like, would this be my next thing? Or would I like put the food away and then, you know, five minutes later, come and ask again? Or how would this work? So my experience is you would at least ask three or four times, like consecutively. Like, hey, take some, take some, take some. This is nothing. This is just a little bit, you know, <laughs> and then... After a while, even if they took a little, then after five minutes, you will pick up the tray again and then, hey, please have some more. You know, you would go to them. That is insane. See, I think <laughs> it would actually be considered a little bit rude here in Germany. Like if you're offered food and honestly, obviously, like if, if you're allergic or something like oh, nobody cares, like that's fine. But let's say, you know, you're you're making food and you have people over and you put a lot of time and maybe effort into making food you at least expect them to be, you know, kind of kind and take like, you know, one thing of whatever you made or something. So I, know. I think it's exactly the opposite. Like if, if I would make a lot of food and somebody came here and be like, no, I'm fine. I'm like, well, great. I just made all of this effort for nothing. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> but the thing is, when you go to someone's place in India, they will never ask you if you want to have dinner or breakfast or lunch or if you're going to have snacks. 
it's just obvious if it's lunch time there will be lunch if it's not lunch time if it's a dinner time there will be dinner if it's like in between there will definitely be snacks so no one will ask you a question and say okay i'm going to prepare something for you it's just given that they are going to do they are going to do some preparations yeah that is great that, that is really <laughs> cool i mean i i certainly can be get behind that attitude but it is completely different you're right um is it i guess it's different in restaurants right if you if you go out to eat because you're expected to i guess want something to eat so it would be weird to say no i'm good when you just ordered food exactly <laughs> you can't say i'm good in the restaurant <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, in over there, you are expected to, uh, you know, pay for your food as well. So you are going to order something. But the thing is, in last few years, in last few years, what has started uh, a trend has started that there are more homely sort of restaurants. So basically, you will go there and they will make sort of a buffet deal with you. You will pay a certain amount of money, which is like very, very cheap compared to the prices here in in Germany or in Western Europe. Um, you would go there and then you will have some food and they will keep coming to you. Oh, have some more, have some more. That's sort of a new trend because you want, they want to give you this homely feeling in restaurants as well. Not, not all the places do that, but those kind of restaurants are getting more and more now. Interesting. All right. So those <laughs> those were the three big things that you would say. The first one is, you know, in, in more private settings and, and not, well, not private, but more casual settings and not super um, business settings. You would call people like uncle or auntie rather than calling them by their first name, if, especially if they're older, that's like a no-go, but you're exactly. expected to, you know, be called by your first name or something else. But if if the people you're talking to are older than you business it's still more sir or madam which makes sense um then we talked about if you're visiting religious places uh, in general religion you should be respectful of local customs and you said if you don't know just ask people and they'll be happily helping you out there yeah. and the third one the the food one if you're in a more homely setting and and from, <laughs> like not not you know super restauranty setting you would uh, be maybe even expected to decline their offers once or twice and then, you know, go ahead, even if you're starving and you just want some food. <laughs> so uh, just a quick anecdote about that. I have a, a German friend, a very good German friend who is married to an Indian girl and they both lived in India for a certain amount of time, I think two years or something. And the girl was telling me the stories when they came back to Germany, like how whenever my friend liked something, he would just like he wouldn't say no i don't want to have it he would just <laughs> eat everything right away and eat like eat the whole plate and in some like in some families over there that consider themselves to be like rich prosperous families it's also they also tend to leave a little bit behind like leave some things on the plate they wouldn't take like all the biscuits leave one or two which i think is completely crazy you shouldn't be wasting food anyways but she, she was telling me, oh, this is what he has been doing in India. It was so embarrassing for me. I was like, no, this is not bad. This is a good thing, actually. But initially, it was embarrassing for her. I love that. You would see somebody from a different culture just sitting there, like horror in their eyes, be like, what is my significant other doing? You can't do that. Are you crazy? All yeah. right. I, this is this is great. So yeah. those are the three the three. I think sometimes even funny, but things to keep in mind. Let's quickly go over a couple of the knigge or, you know, etiquette thing that you may see in other places. For example, on a, I think in India, there, it's quite common to have like open street markets and bazaar. Is it bazaar? What you call it? Like, or, or Zook or something? Uh, um, yeah. Bazaars because, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the invaders or uh, dynasties or empires from, what is now the um, Middle Eastern region, uh, the Arabs, uh, they came to India and conquered India. And the bazaar words, uh, word comes from Arabic as far as I know. So that's why it, uh, those markets are called bazaars in India as well. All right. So so you have those oh, like big markets with a lot of merchants selling stuff. When yeah. you go there, are you expected to maybe bargain? Are prices set? Should you not expect to bargain? Like, What is the etiquette there? Always always you have to especially if you are a foreigner as soon as you have an accent 
the prices will go 10 <laughs> times higher. Is is there even a chance you get like a good price or or I mean you I guess you have to bargain then, right? Yeah, I mean if I would say always take a local with you because it doesn't matter how much you bargain because you don't know how much you have to bargain, right? Do so you never did this in Europe? And you're suddenly in India or in some other countries where you have to bargain. And you would say, okay, if someone is asking you 10 euros, you would say, okay, I might say five euros, right? And But five euros is still five times higher than this person <laughs> would be willing to uh, sell you the stuff for, right? So uh, I, I would say take a local person with you who has local knowledge uh, and always bargain. Okay. This is another in a interesting story. So um, I was with my colleagues in Paris. We were having an offsite there, and we were uh, at the Eiffel Tower. We had a fun event after the offsite, and uh, there were these uh, vendors selling the Eiffel Tower oh, keychains. Oh yes! Right? Oh, I remember. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so they asked five euros for one one of those keychains, right? And my five or Three, I'm not really sure, like a really absurd amount of money, right? And my uh, other colleagues, they were like, okay, let's buy, let's, because not the whole team was there. And we were thinking, okay, we can gift it to other members of the team who were not there. Let's, let's buy it. I was like, what, what are you doing? You can't do this. I was like, then I went to this person. I said, okay, how much, how much do you really want? <laughs> then he came like to the half price. Again, how much, how much, right? <laughs> and then they gave it, gave one like for one euro or something, which was like at least one third less than what they were expecting. Now I was sure he would go even more down, but I did not want to spend so much time haggling. And they were so surprised. My colleagues were like, how did you do that? This is amazing. <laughs> but that's normal for you, right? That's That's what you would do in India, I guess. Yeah, in India, like when I was a teenager, that was quite embarrassing for me because when I would say, I would say, mom, why are you sort of haggling with them? Why are you discussing this with them? But this is what I learned from my mom. I, I knew um, that you have to do that. I, I took a training uh, a while back. Uh, it was called, I think, something like negotiation skills or something, you know? Yeah. So basically what they were telling us was okay you have to think how much you are willing to pay for a certain product and then take it as a baseline and then start sort of negotiating with the person with the other party right i was like my mom never took this training but she masters this <laughs> she knows exactly how to do this i was like she could be so good at giving this training if she is yeah it's amazing and that's all the housewives all the almost all the women in india a lot of the men in india do that as well so you have to you are born in that culture and it's not considered rude like if you're a merchant no. and you and someone tells you like so no that's not i'm not going to pay this like i'm going to pay this like it's okay to do this right like you're yeah it's 100 okay uh, there are now stores like big stores in India as well. You know the big chains like uh, what's the American chain called? Walmart. Walmart, etc. Et yeah. Right. Uh, of course, there will be no bargaining over there. <laughs> you will go there and you will pay whatever is. I expect like whenever the first store like this popped up in India, like were people going to the cash like, <laughs> registers and be like, "No, I'm not going to pay this. I'm going to pay this much." And then they were like, "This is not how our like Walmart concept works." <laughs> um, I I don't know. I'm not really sure what happened. I bet. <laughs> like it had to have at some point people would have to well, but it's fine. Yeah, the the by the way, the Alpha Tire story, I went through that at least once or twice because I, I went there. I think it was 2012 yeah. with a couple of friends from from uh the US. Mm -hmm. And back then you were swarmed by the people. Right now there's I think it's still there's a last time I visited, there was a whole, you know, like new security concept under the Eiffel Tower. So you couldn't just get straight under the Eiffel Tower anymore. But um, a lot of like back then it was still, you could just do that. And yeah. so many of them swarmed you. And as soon as you would start to show some interest in them, a lot of the other came running. Basically like a lot of, I don't want to sound disrespectful, like if, but if you're ever at a pond with a lot of ducks and you throw out some bread, you know, all the other ducks come as well. It yeah. was like that. And I remember that I bought my Eiffel Tower keychains for, I don't know, I think I bought like whatever it was, like 
maybe four for two or three years or something. But then my other friend, like just five minutes later or something, he got like four for one euro. And I was like, oh, this is so unfair. Like I just paid like four times that price for for the same amount. So yeah. Yeah. I think that was it with me as well. We paid then the and like for three we paid one euro. Uh, I I was in because we are talking about Paris. I was in Paris in 2008 and with a couple of friends. And I had a negative sort of experience as well. There were like uh, four or five big guys who sort of surrounded me. And they said, oh, here's a band for you, just a friendship band. I was like, no, 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 I don't want it. And they were, oh, this is my culture. I need to give it to you. And then they suddenly tied it around my wrist. And then they started asking for 20 euros, and which was a lot of money as a student, especially for something you didn't really <laughs> want, didn't right? Want, yeah. And then you consider that there are like uh, four tall, six and a half feet guys standing around you and you're just alone. You can't even fight that, you know, so you suddenly, I suddenly had to give 20 euros for that, something I did not want. It was a negative experience. And this kind of things happen a lot in, in the touristic places, I, I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. But that's the haggling part, right? And, yeah. and that's what you're expected to do. So if you ever go there, definitely don't pay the price you're initially asked for, unless you're going to a big store like Walmart, uh, yeah. which in that case, you do want to do that. Otherwise, probably you get the police on call on you. Um, we, we did talk a little bit about introducing yourself to others and, you know, the whole auntie and uncle thing. What is the coronavirus apart? What is the usual, like, greeting type because in germany you would shake hands that's that's how a lot of the stuff goes and if you're more familiar you would hug but that's you know like in in general if if you're going somewhere as a foreigner you would probably shake hands more often than not if, if this ever comes back which honestly i don't i don't necessarily have it to have it come back because it's you know germs and stuff like that but anyway that's how you would do it what would be the default like greeting in india so if you folded your hands like this and said namaste, like bowed your head a little bit and say namaste, uh, that's, I think, the most commonly used form of greeting in India. It comes from Hinduism, but it is also a cultural thing now. Okay. So as usually happen, religion has some impact on the culture. Culture has some impact on the religion. It happened over there as well. So you would fold your hands, say namaste. And, uh, Sikhs in Punjab, Sikhs in Punjab would go Sasrikal. They would also fold their hands like this, bow, uh, bow their head a little. Uh, I think uh, Muslims have some different uh, um, sort of uh, greeting. They would say Adab or Aslam Alaikum uh, in India as well. So, but you won't do anything wrong if you just folded your hand and said something like namaste or namaskar yeah that is good that's an easy way so it would definitely be weird if you would try to shake someone's hand uh young people know you okay. i mean you would always they always they know uh that you say hello by shaking hand and that's what they would do as well but generally like for everyone you can always say you can always fold your hand and say namaste yeah that'll always Interesting. work well, I guess that helps a little bit in like a global pandemic because it's not the default to touch someone else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree. <laughs> and that's a greeting you can do from like, I don't know, six feet apart, right? Yeah, definitely. It works. <laughs> it works. If your eyesight isn't too bad, it, it should work. <laughs> well, because here's the thing, like, I think it's so interesting because... A lot of people here, it took some time to get adjusted to, even on TV right now, sometimes with politicians, you know, being on conferences, uh, you know, obviously they're good at wearing masks, uh, at least some of them, most of them. Uh, but, but you know, you'd still see like some people, especially in the earlier days, and they would try to come in with their handshake and then it'd be like, oh shit, we can't shake hands. So they they would draw their hand back and then they're like, yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's, it's, it was a lot easier for people to adjust in India because it was like it that was the way to greet yourself before so yeah yeah uh, i guess it hasn't been that difficult for indians <laughs> the pandemic itself has been quite difficult oh, oh because... yeah i mean it, it <laughs> yeah. has been for everyone in the for world everyone. but that is uh but that's one part at least which maybe has mm -hmm. taken a little less toll on people interesting all right so maybe let's pick up one more um, when you, we talked a lot about eating and I think it's a lot, you know, when people, especially if you travel, like one of the things you're expecting to do, except from, you know, visiting places and, and 
obviously, hopefully locals, uh, you want to eat food. So yeah. we talked about, you know, some of the stuff where you, if you're in a homely f situation, you would ask, you know, you would be asked once or twice and you would be asked or expected to maybe decline once or twice. Yeah. When the actual eating itself comes along, how is this happening? Because in Germany, and I would say mostly in Europe, well, not everywhere, but mostly, especially in Germany, you would be expected to, you know, sit down. If you're super formal, you would wait for your hosts or, you know, elderlies to sit down first, and then you would take a seat. And then obviously you wouldn't start until you, sometimes if you're in a super religious setting, the, you know, a prayer would be would be said and then you would eat um that's not you know the case everywhere but in some super religious settings you would still or what what do i say super like in some religious settings you would still see that um and then you know you would you would eat with knife and fork and you're expected to hold them in a certain way stuff stuff like that which is the general way of doing things and then there's obviously some certain exceptions which i always found weird like i think chicken is one of the exceptions that even in germany you i think you can eat by hand even mm. here, it's considered okay. So there are certain, you know, things to deviate from them, but that's the general setting. How is it in India? Like, how is the sitting down? How is the eating the food? Is is there something special? Uh, it depends on the region you are in. I can start talking with the North Indian part, like Punjab, where I'm from, again. Um, so you would usually have stuff like curries which you can't really eat without a spoon so in that case <laughs> true okay i don't want to burn my hand put it out oh, this is so nice <laughs> exactly so so you need spoon for that uh, but then there will be flatbread like chapati or parathas we talked about that in one of our episodes um you would eat with your hand so you would break it with your hand and then put it in the curry and then put it in your mouth so that's something you you do so different forks and knives are something you know not common in india but you will see people using it because it's sort of it's a western thing it's a modern thing a lot of the high-end places restaurants would offer you folks and knives and depending on the stuff you're eating as well so if you're eating anything like you know a, a western dish uh something i don't know something from italy pizza pasta obviously you will be getting it so yeah <laughs> I, I, there are actually some german restaurants over there as well so oh, I bet. In, in german restaurants cities. are everywhere i remember yeah. i think it was in Canada I was visiting my brother uh, lives and studies there and uh, we went to visit him and I think he took us out to like a German restaurant in Canada which was yeah. it was weird I mean it yeah. was it was great it was a German family having the restaurant there but it was like you would you would get like traditional German food and actually pretty well prepared like it was it was nice food in yeah. like halfway around the world well not halfway around but you know a third of way around yeah. the world or something it was weird it was cool <laughs> It's usually southern German food, right? In yes. the foreign countries. That's what yes. I've noticed as well. Well, it's, I think it's the more, you know, if you see a house made out of wood, you know, and the cook's clocks or uh, the, you know, the, the what are they called? Like the... The the Swiss cuckoo yeah. or something, yeah. The yeah, one whatever, where the you know, that, comes out and yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like and this is just that's southern Germany, but that's what is easier to export than a Hamburg Panfish filet or something. Like, you know, True. that's like people are not associating that, especially with Germany. Whereas yeah. a Kuckucksluck and a Schnitzel or you know the sausages and stuff, it's easier to say like, oh, that's the German way. So. Yeah, also Lederhosen. That is always so interesting oh to me whenever God. people. People talk yeah. about Germany. Oh, Lederhose. And now I'm like, no, in Hamburg, we don't do that. <laughs> it's, it's just pretty much only on the Wiesen, like only in like, you know, certain times of the year. And also, you know, the, the Rammstein, the band. Yeah. Like it's always like, oh, so when you're from Germany, oh, you know Rammstein? Like, yes, but not everyone in Germany listens to that. It's like, yeah, yeah. it is weird. All right. All right. Okay. Perfect. So very last thing before we will break it off here. Um, yeah. Clothing. Is there anything specific to keep in mind when you clothe yourself apart from visiting temples where we said, you know, wear something decent. You probably don't want to have your cleavage hanging out uh, when, when you go to a religious place. Probably a good thing to do in Germany as well, but I don't think you would really get in trouble here for doing that. Um, yeah. Anything else there? I think generally it's also a good idea to wear clothes which are more sort of which 
cover like not most of your body but you know if especially if you're a woman i i believe in dressing however you want to yourself but if you want to not be sort of seen instantly if you want to remain a little bit under the radar because it can be dangerous as well sometimes like you know smaller cities usually aren't but in the bigger cities you attract a lot of attraction and there might be some people some you know there are always some wrong elements in the society they might do something bad to you so just because be on... because they can see you being foreign by exactly. the way you dress okay. yeah and this would happen anywhere actually so i was robbed i was actually my my pot money was taken by uh, my pot money my my wallet was taken yeah. uh, in italy in rome uh, really uh, yeah, a, a huge story, long story. I will tell you sometime later. But I was stupid enough to wear a Hawaiian shirt and a cap, a big cap, and I was looking like a tourist. So obviously they were going to target me. So just to, I mean, remain under the radar, sort of try to uh, mix with the general society, I would say wear, you know, maybe a T-shirt. And if it's too hot, uh, pants up to the knees at least you know so yeah try to avoid uh like wearing mini skirts etc which because i don't think and there's anything any kind of problem with that again but people over there you will instantly gain attention if you do that in india yeah i would say in germany maybe it's the other way around you would probably gain attention if it's a super hot summer day and you wouldn't wear something short yeah. uh no matter which gender you are because it like it's mostly expected I, also the only thing where it isn't probably is the workplace like the first company i worked for it's uh it like if you would come to the office with shorts on a hot summer day that would be a little weird like right now <laughs> it's completely fine but i don't know it's it's just a thing but yes i i would say that's probably a good tip to to stay kind of under the local and yeah. that's you know one thing where i would say it's also a bit of respect you want to pay to that local society you don't want to be like in your face i'm here i'm like whatever german or american or italian like uh, because i feel like you should always try to be you should you should do a little like just a tiny bit of research when you're i don't know on the plane or on the bus or on the boat wherever you're going you know just to try to figure out if what you're doing is completely out of the norm or yeah. something that's normal, right? So I think if it's not too much work for you, and it certainly shouldn't be to wear pants and a t-shirt or something. Then, I mean, you know. wearing normal jeans and t-shirt is like absolutely fine. So if you can do that, please try exactly. and do that. Exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. All right, Harbir, it was so much fun talking to you about this. Honestly, this th I got way more out of this than I was expecting at first. So I'm glad <laughs> I picked this topic up, um, yeah. especially if, if anyone listening to this is ever visiting uh, India. I would say you have a lot better understanding now than you had, at least I have. Like I can speak for myself. I would now feel way more prepared going into this. Although yeah. you definitely hear some of these stuff, you know, being thrown around, but hearing it in such a, you know, interesting and, and and personal way from you thank you so much Ravi. it was it was really interesting is there any anything else you you want to tell our listeners here before we wrap it up um i don't want to put off anyone from, from going india please you're going to india please do go it's an interesting country it's a different world especially when you are from you know western part of the, uh, part of the globe you know, from one of the western countries so i think it'll be uh nice and interesting for you it uh, would widen your horizon as well as coming to germany or visiting all the other countries like us and different countries in europe did for me i think traveling is a great thing please do do that um if you can you know especially when the pandemic is over <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> not right now maybe the best idea but you know for later and I think we should do, Alex, uh, an episode about Germany as well with do's and don'ts because I think there are some very interesting things there over as well. That's a great idea. I think we only touched yeah. upon a couple of things here, but uh, yeah. oh, yeah, we, we should definitely do this. Yeah, cool. Javier, thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for listening to this episode of German Masala Podcast. We will be back in, as we said in the beginning, three weeks this time because... You know, why not 
a little bit more time gives us a little bit more time <laughs> um obviously if you're listening on any of the podcast services you already have us and probably are subscribed if you're not subscribed and if you're listening to this on youtube but you think hey maybe i just want to have this as an audio only format we're on all the major platforms including tune in spotify google podcast apple podcast uh and wherever you can find us if we're not on any platform, please do let us know. Our email address is down in the show notes um, or in the YouTube video description. If you're listening on YouTube, please feel free to leave us a comment. If you have any sort of discussion topics you want us to hear about, if there's anything you want to know about India or Germany that we can uh, we can broaden your horizon with. And um, we appreciate your time listening to us and we hope you enjoyed this episode. German Masala is a podcast under the Alex Universe brand, which is currently this podcast hosted by Harbier and myself. And that's also a YouTube channel called Alex Universe, where I talk about electromobility, but that's in German language. So mostly in German language. So uh, if you're one of our international listeners, probably best to keep to the podcast for now. <laughs>